This week on Film Lunch, we'll be watching a Philadelphia story. The 1941 film by George Cukor, starring Katherine Hepburn, Jimmy Stewart, and Cary Grant, about a social a Philadelphia socialite and on her wedding day and the tabloid news crew trying to get the story. A Philadelphia story. It's based on a Broadway play by Philip Berry. It was written specifically for Katherine Hepburn to play the role. She needed it. Um, she did need it. She was at the time in a slump. Um, well, she was labeled box office poison. She was labeled box office poison. And this movie um, was going, was the movie that sort of took the taint off of her star. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was directed by George Kukar. Kukar. I'm, if, if, if anyone can yes. enunciate in Let the Let us know thing, how you say his last name. I have always said George Kukar. Which is probably accurate because you're so in tune with this movie. I can only find a interview, and it's a really fun interview. If you find the interview of Katherine Hepburn on the um, Dick Cavett show, the Dick Cavett show, it's 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 hilarious. Awesome. It's, really it's really great. But the only time I could hear someone say his name was in the the interview, and Katherine Hepburn's <laughs> like, "My friend George Kuka," and I, it it helped me not at all prepare think, for this. I don't think anyone <laughs> should ever use Katherine Hepburn as a linguistic guide. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure whatever, however you say his last name, it's not Kuka. Kuka. <laughs> um, George. George, my friend, George Kuka. Kuka. I think it was George Cougar. Okay. But George I mean, Cougar. I tend to dumb names down, so maybe I'm wrong. Let us know. If you can Message phonetically us. write it for us, we're fine um, with that. Yeah, we'll we'll do a corrections next time. Um, um, and now an interesting thing about Kukar, Cougar is that you know he direct was available to direct this because he was fired from directing Gone with the Wind. Right. Um, he was the original director of Gone with the Wind. Clark Gable hated him. That is well, there's several stories that go around about why he left. I don't know if Gone he hated him, wind. but George Cukor is known. I mean, he is known he, across the board as a woman's director. Well, he was a woman's director. He was unabashedly gay. Oh yeah. Unabashedly gay. I mean, he was not in the closet. Um, Bully for him, man. That's at all awesome. at that time, and that's one reason why I think women like to work with him so much because they didn't have to. They weren't subject to a casting help. Right. Scenario. They didn't have to worry about it. Um, and you know, there's something about a gay man and his ladies that can really work. <laughs> so should we take it scene by scene? Let's go. So the first um, scene. This real light-hearted, like. Mm -hmm. Music like seems real jolly, and you see an angry Cary Grant storming out. Bags in tow. Bags in tow. He's leaving. He's had it. Then it's followed by an indignant um, Catherine Hepburn with his golf clubs. Like Tracy Lord. Tracy Lord, and she takes one of the golf clubs, breaks it over her knee, and then she storms back towards the door. And right. Grant follows in tow and, and taps gives, her. Yeah, gives her a little tap. And then he. The way he just takes her face to me. It's very is almost perfect. like Three Stooges. We catch to this place where we have Dinah Lord, who I'm just going to say 50 years later, she could have played a Connor kid on Roseanne. She could have. She does look like Darlene. <laughs> she is very Darlene looking. Not or Darlene DJ. <laughs> yeah. Any of these. She could have. She could have played a Connor kid. And just uh, the first lines you hear. Tracy! Are... Tracy! How do you spell omelet? Oh, you fool. Why is he for the ceremony? They're, they're, they're for the cataloging reception. there. All the wedding, wedding gifts, gifts that are coming. It's this huge society wedding. It's She's huge marrying um, George Kittrich. George Kittrich, who He's has become like man. self made oil man. Right, in her father's company. In her father's company. And seemingly she's doting over him a bit when she talks about him a bit. Yeah, she's got a really good job. But is she trying to convince herself? But then we cut to Spy Magazine. The deal is, is they want. A story on this wedding. The on Spy Magazine wants a story on Tracy the wedding. Lord, yes. second wedding. They want the story. A wedding day inside mainline society. Or what the kitchen maid saw through the keyhole. Unquote. Go ahead, Connor. Writing's your job. I'm only the publisher. All right, publisher. Take this. Quote. No hunter of buckshot in the rear is KG Crafty Connor. Unquote. Close paragraph. Close job. Close bank account. But look, Mr. Kidd, how can we possibly get inside the Lord Estate, let alone the house? Now, we're not going to do it, Liz. Doggone it, it's degrading, it's undignified. Well, so is an empty stomach. So then C.K. Dexter enters the room. I understand we understand each other. Quite. Um, Connor and Mike is like, oh, you want to get even with your, with your ex-wife. Oh, you want to get even with your ex-bride, huh? 
I'll have a car, pick them up at noon tomorrow, North Philadelphia. We also find out he tells Tracy sort of privately oh, right. that, you know, hey, the, the reason, reason the reason why I brought them here is really not ill intent. And this is a we you know, when you're in the spy magazine office, you kinda of are going along with that. That it's right. oh he's just being vindictive. But Especially because all we know of him before is Is that pushing yeah. her down and But come to find out, so his father lord Father Lord has been spending some time in New York with a dancer named Tina, Tina Mara. Tina Mara, and um, it's been very publicized. It's been very Spy. publicized, and so Spy Magazine has this story they're going to run on this affair that right. they're claiming is happening, and in order to hold the story back, they want the wedding scoop. They want the pictures from the wedding. They want the story from the wedding. So basically, yes, they're blackmailing C.K. Dexter into blackmailing the family. Into to, getting this scoop. Yes. She's indignant at first. Mm -hmm. She's just like, you mean, I'm supposed to be... I, I, I keep wanting to say Waffle House terms for hash browns, like scattered, smothered, and covered. That's I'm supposed to be scattered, covered, and chunked. <laughs> oh my God, I would love to hear Catherine Hepburn order at Waffle I House. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Two eggs, over easy, hash browns, smattered, Mothered and chunked. <laughs> I don't even know. That, I don't even know that chunked is an. I want the all American deal. <laughs> Can't we get stationary tables? <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That makes me happy. Um, so they, she decides to go along with it. She's got to go against along her with will. It. Against her will, she's got along. She knows she has. They have to keep up appearances for the family. Yep. Got to go along with it. And, and there has been some disdain for father. Yeah, a little bit as we've been a little bit, with Tracy. especially with Tracy. There's a little resentment toward Father. There's something going on with Tracy and Father Lord. And something a trend you start to notice is there's a lot of disdain that Tracy has for a lot of people. Like she's very judgmental. She's very Tracy has standards and she's very high pollutant. She's a girl who's generous to a fault. To a fault, Mr. Connor. Uh, except to other people's faults. For instance, she never had any understanding of my deep and gorgeous thirst. That was your problem. Granted. But you took on that problem with me when you took me, Red. You were no helpmate there. You were a scold. It was disgusting. It made you so unattractive. Mm, a weakness, sure. And strength is her religion, Mr. Connor. She finds human imperfection unforgivable. Because you'll never be a first-class human being or a first-class woman. Until you've learned to have some regard for human frailty. It's a pity your own foot can't slip a little sometime. But your sense of inner divinity wouldn't allow that. This goddess must and shall remain intact. And there's like three poured glasses of champagne. She downs them. And she downs all three of them. And we already know that Tracy is not a big drinker. Right. And then we know that champagne has gotten her in trouble once before. Right. Or in loosen, a, com loosen, a compromised position. Loosen the virtues. Yes, exactly. Oh, very well. The Lord well, virtues. Well, look, George, if it's that much of a chore, not just... Not for me! Oh, no, you don't, Connie. You've been too attentive as it is. George, please. What will the neighbors think? The cause of true love. Gathers no moss. Well, this is where Cinderella gets off. Now, you hurry back to the ball before you turn into a pumpkin and six white mice. Goodbye. C.K. Dexter Haven. Oh, C.K. Dexter Haven! What's up? You are. I only hope it's worth it. Come on in. And this is my favorite scene of the whole movie. Doggone it, C.K. Dexter Haven. Neither I'm gonna sock you or you're gonna sock me. Shall we toss a coin? Let me tell you about the time you went to Boston to be awarded the Sarah Langley Medal for World Peace. The true story on that little John had ruined it. Look, Connor. Hmm? What would happen to you if I used this stuff? Why? Well, I might want to very much. You see, Kit is holding a dirty piece on Trace's father. This might stop him. Show Liz to a typewriter and stand back. Can she do it? She can and she will. And you dictate to her and then bring her home. Well, aren't you coming, Liz? Well, it seems I've got to commit suicide first. Going my way, miss? Miss Goddess to you. Okay, Miss Goddess to me. Oh, Tracy does drive. She wakes up. I don't up. know that either of them should have been driving. Not at all. There was definitely some drunk driving going on. Don't do this at home. There's definitely some drunk driving going on in this scene. Yeah. And they 
more bonding goes on. Like, yeah, definitely. More like you know, this, we've all had that drunk flirting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's more like talk and more bonding goes on. And you know, tomorrow Tracy's supposed to be getting married. All right, like in a few hours at this point, because yeah. I think it's like a midday wedding. Yeah. They so they decide to go for a swim. They go for a swim. And then before you know it, he's coming back with her. And he's singing somewhere with a rainbow. Yeah, and they're both in robes, and she's. And at some point, both Dexter and George show back up. Hello, Dexter. Hello, George. Hello, Mike. <laughs> and I don't remember how she gets out of the picture. Well, I know that Mike takes her up to her room and lays her on her bed and leaves. Oh, right. And then he, he leaves when and he comes back. And then when That's he comes right. back down, Dexter actually punches him. Well, why, you look. How do you feel? Now, look, if you think I... I know, I know. I'm sorry. But I thought I'd better hit you before he did. He's in better shape than I am. Well, you'll do. You don't believe it, then. Believe what? Well, the, uh, the implications of what you saw, let us say. Well, what else am I to believe? That's entirely up to you. I got eyes. I got imagination, haven't I? I don't know, have you? I'm pretty sure that's when Mike comes in. That is like... when Mike comes in and he's like, he's like, it was a swim and some sh- a dance and some champagne and I didn't... And maybe a kiss on the lips, but that's it. Yeah. Like a kiss on the cheek. I and I'm not going to say I regretted any of it. Right, But right, that right. was all that happened. I'm, I'm standing up for her honor. Uh-huh. And uh, he's like, oh. And George is all of a sudden like, oh, well then we can get married. But in the yes, turn of yes. all the things that have happened good emotionally in with the past Tracy, hours, yeah. where she's realized understand. all of a sudden that Look here, Tracy. You're too good for me, George. You're a hundred times too but good. I never said And I... I'd make you most unhappy, most. That is, I'd do my best to. Well, that's the way you want it. That's the way it is. And then all of a sudden... Oh, my sainted aunt. You heard, like, the wedding part. Oh, right, and they're like, what are we going to do? Yeah, so there's... Somebody's got to get married. Oh, God, it's the wedding march. Mike, though, says, I'll do it. I'll marry you. Will you marry me, Tracy? And she and... says that's really sweet, but I think Liz would have a problem with it. Right, that's because right, I yes. Fucking poor Liz. Liz. Poor Liz. Because I mean, then I'm... Mike's like, oh, sorry, Liz. Because like, if I was, I'd be a little pissed at Mike. I might be like... I'm not pissed at all of them. Yeah, I might be a little bit like... I would not be a friend of Tracy Lord's. No. Well, sorry, Lord. <laughs> I totally hang with Tracy Lords, but yeah. And then she's like, "No, I've done this. I need to own up and finally have my consequences." And she's going to call the wedding off, right? And she's at the door. Sorry that you all came to my wedding. And then Dexter's feeding her lines, and basically he's saying, "But there is going to be a marriage today, and I'm going to marry Dexter." Right. Like basically, like they had eloped their first wedding. Mm-hmm. She's like, I cheated you all out of a wedding the first time, and now I'm going to get. She's he's going to give it to you. And she realizes what he's saying is she looks ecstatic. Promise to be honest. Be whatever you like. You're my redhead. You all set. Okay. And then they look at like Liz Honored, and um, Mike, Mike, Mike and to be the official. Like, and best honor, he's like best man, man, and she's like maid of honor. Which I'm like, she didn't have a maid of honor before this. Yeah, really. It's like, like what? it was like, isn't there some society uh, bitch really? waiting in the side wings? Yes. Yeah. And then they go get married. Yeah. And then right as they're like saying the I do's, you hear a kick, and their face turns, and it's Sydney Kid getting his story. Getting his story. So, and that's kind of how it ends. It's just snapshots of the wedding that yeah. would have been in Spy Magazine. Right, and that's the Philadelphia story, and it's delightful, and if you did not watch it before this You movie, should watch it. I mean, before this show, even though we spoiled it, there's it's, not really a spoiler. It's, it's so fun it's to watch. It's a great escape movie. Um, and later on they went on, someone thought it would be a good idea to turn this into a musical. Oh my god. So it was made into a, it's like a Cole Porter musical, I think, called High Society. With, and it is an abomination. With Frank Sinatra and Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby, that's it. Do not get me started on the abomination that is High Society. But the movie was so successful that they thought they should make a musical out of it. True, but it just sucks all the soul out of this movie. And I'm sorry, I know people love it. Some people do love it. They do, and I know people love Grace Kelly. Fine. I find her boring. I find her like, she is the George Kittredge of actresses. She's a little whitewashed, a little whitewashed. And I just, I was, it's, it's a musical, and they do it word for word. It's just awful. Tell me why it's good. If you if like you it. If you love it, tell us why you love it. Tell me why you love it, and I will argue with you why you're wrong. 
But in the knowledge. meantime, you should watch a Philadelphia story. Yes. And, and realize how wonderful. You it should is. join us next time, and we're going to be taking a much more serious tone to talk about the 1955 um, on the Yolanda Kazan's movie on the waterfront with Marlon Brando and Eva Marie Saint. It's going to be good. Um, so, so if you'd like to watch it before we talk about it, go do so. Go ahead, get your watch on, and join us for the discussion. The discussion next time on Filmwash. And thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, cheers. I like that much. Alright. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Boom.